Hello and welcome back to the X-Men blog. My name is Rob. First off, thank you very much for the feedback, the outstanding incredible feedback that you gave me on the last video about how to paddle like world champion Kelly Slater. Uh, I really appreciate the feedback and, and definitely keep it coming. Uh, today I'm up in Northern California and I'm going to talk about another NorCal surfer. Uh, and what I'm going to go ahead and do is analyze Nat Young's wave in round five of the Rip Curl Pro Bells Beach. Uh, that that really led him into his very first world tour finals appearance. And the wave happened in the dying moments of the round against Josh Kerr. And Kerr, he had priority, saw the wave, but didn't paddle for it. And granted, it didn't look like much, and he knew that Nat needed a pretty big score. Well, Nat paddled like crazy, caught the wave, got an 8.5, ended up winning that heat, and then took that momentum into uh, the next few heats to make it onto the finals. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at three key techniques that Nat uses. Uh, take a look at how they relate to swimming and how you can use them to improve your paddling. The first of the three key techniques is his kick. You can see in this video, he begins kicking as hard as he can, even before the wave looks like a rideable wave. What kicking does for him is not so much to propel him forward, but rather kicking raises the back half of his body higher in the water. When the back half of your body is higher in the water, there's less resistance moving forward. And that is the key lowering your resistance as you move through the water faster. Take a look at this illustration from swimming. Here you can easily see how when your body is lower in the water, more resistance is pushing against you as you move forward, especially as you move faster. This is similar to air resistance. You want to minimize the resistance and really cut through the water. You know, a good way to practice this feeling is next time you're in a car on the highway, roll down your window and put your arm out, kind of like when you did when you were a kid. You feel a lot more resistance if your hand and your forearm are perpendicular to the ground than when they're parallel to the ground and you're gliding your hand through the air. When it's parallel to the ground, this is the same kind of feeling you should have as you swim or paddle through the water. Another good drill is to take a kickboard and hold it perpendicular to the ground of the pool and try and kick or tread forward. Then lower the angle of the kickboard so that it's parallel uh, and on top of the water to feel the difference. And you can do this standing up in the shallow end as well just to feel that difference in resistance. In the previous video we talked about how surfing on a short board is a lot like swimming head up freestyle. More of your body is in the water. So to compensate for that resistance, kicking helps raise the back half of your body up out of the water. And this is what Nat does here. And whenever you feel that you're behind a wave or the wave is going faster than you are, it's even more important to start getting your speed up early. Because Nat started kicking and paddling early, he had a better chance than if Kerr suddenly decided to paddle for that same wave. All right, moving on. The second key technique he uses is to put his head down. You can see here that in addition to the kicking, he also drops his head during the time he needed the most acceleration. Why do you think this is helpful? For the same reason as the last technique. Dropping your head on a short board brings the body and board more parallel to the surface of the water thus reducing resistance. In swimming we think about this a lot but because there's no board as a flotation device we think more in terms of pushing your chest and subsequently your lungs down to the bottom of the pool. And think about your lungs and relate them to uh, an inflated ball in the water. What happens when you push the ball into water? It pops back up. So your lungs are going to be bringing your chest up to the surface of, of the water. Uh, the idea is then to push your chest down as you swim forward so that it feels like you are swimming downhill. In swimming, you want to keep your head neutral, not high and not too low. If you raise your head, 
the lower body drops. If you drop your head, your lower body comes back up. But if you drop your head too much, additional resistance occurs from your dropped head. And you can try this in the pool. Kick off the wall on your stomach. Keep your arms to your side with your head neutral. In, in other words, look straight down at the bottom of the pool. And add just a very light kick to keep your forward momentum going. Then raise your head up forward, looking forward, and feel your lower body drop to the bottom of the pool. And this is also an effective drill to do on your back. This concept is also why swimmers swim with their heads neutral and not up. They go faster because, again, their lower bodies are closer to the surface of the water and there's less resistance. In surfing, dropping your head down as you paddle puts more pressure on the chest area, which will lift the back half of your body and board. There's a sprint swim set that I'll list below this video on the blog that helps you feel the difference between head up and head down or head neutral freestyle. You can also try this set actually after you finish surfing a wave and are paddling back out to the surf. Okay, last technique. The third technique really isn't a technique, but more of a state of mind. You have to commit. And I know it sounds hokey, and I'm sure you've heard this before, but I've seen it time and time again how when a person really wants something, amazing things happen. I've also seen a lot of great waves go by because the surfers paddling for them didn't really want them. You know, Maybe it was due to the fact that they were scared of the size of the wave or uh, what was down below, like a sharp reef or whatever. When you want it, when you want the wave, you paddle like a crazy person to get it. I've had some correspondence with Nick Carroll who was on the ground during the Rip Curl event and he said when he spoke to Nat about that wave, Nat said that he has never paddled so hard in his life. And, you know, Nat's been surfing for a long time in contests, big contests for a long time, though he's relatively young. And I think that's saying a lot about how important committing to catching a wave uh, really is. So in summary, those are your three key takeaways. The first one, Especially if you're behind the wave, make sure you kick and kick and kick and get that back half of your body and the board up a little bit higher, a little bit more even. Um, the second thing is get your head down. And again, this is if you're trying to catch up to the swell and you feel like you're behind it and you haven't caught it yet. Get that head down so that it lifts that back, up, back end of your board and your body up out of the water even more. And then the third thing is make sure you commit and you catch that wave. you got to want it. So those are your three takeaways. I'm going to post a few swim sets uh, below this video so you can try them out. Uh, that will help the first two techniques. And I'll post also some swim drills that you can do in the pool. Or you can try some of this stuff out in the water while you're on your board by doing a couple of sprint sets after catching a wave, going back up from lineup, try it a couple times. Uh, and help your paddling out there. If you're interested in the X Swim for Surfers program, we have a lot of these swim drills that uh, will help you with your surfing. You can check it out at the X Swim for Surfers website. And uh, I really, really appreciate you guys watching. Um, thank you, thank you very much for watching. If you guys have comments, questions, uh, if you want to contact me, shoot me an email. And uh, if you feel like this video helped you, share it with your friends. Until next time, I'll, uh, I'll see you out in the water.